Rub up your engines! All right, today we've got a question. This car keeps going dead. Is it the battery or is it the car? We're gonna find out which it is and we're gonna show you a story of how bad Optima batteries have gotten. He found out that Optima tried to sell him a battery that was 999 days old. Now, let me tell you something about batteries. Batteries are like eggs. You want them fresh. As soon as the acid is put in a battery, it starts to degrade. When I was a young mechanic, we saw vacuum sealed batteries. There was nothing in them, they were vacuum sealed. We'd punch the vacuums, we'd pour acid in, and we'd charge them on the machine for an hour. But nobody's got patience anymore. So they fill the stinking things at the factory. As soon as they're added, they start to degrade. In this case, that Optima battery was 999 days old and had hardly any of the power left in it. Right, A little bit less than four years ago, he replaced the battery with this battery. It's an Odyssey battery. It's absorbed glass mat, which are very good batteries. It's January 2024, August 2023. He had to start jump starting this thing if it's sat. So we're going to try to figure out, is the battery just gone because it is four years old? Or, on the other hand, is there a short somewhere in the car that's draining it? So we got our battery tester out here. Start with the battery health test. It's an AGM flat plate. That's the new battery that he bought. Okay, it's looking for floating electricity. He said it's 850. Again, I hate the slide because the slide, look how hard it is to get it to 850. It's a bad design. They should make this better. It's almost impossible to get it to 850. Look at it, look at it, 830. It's driving me insane. Okay, we'll do 857, that's close enough. <laughs> the battery has 100% capacity. It has 55% of its battery life left, okay? So if although there's 55% left, it is almost four years old. So you're gonna lose stuff, but the capacity is 100%. So we're gonna do a starting system test. There's the key. Oh, we gotta push our foot on the brake. <laughs> All right, everything's warm. Okay, so indeed we know the battery's good, the starter's good, it's not draining too much. So let's do the charging system. It's just a help test. You already started it. It's checking the diode ripper. Normal so far. You can see that's the voltage, and it's got zero ripple, so that's good. Now we'll rev it up to 2500 RPM, and here we have it. It's charging normal with the loaded voltage, but with the no load voltage, it's charging too high. Either there is a short in the system that's making it overcharge when it's idling and not when it's revving real high, or we got a bad alternator. All right, breaking news though. I just found out that the battery terminal here is loose. I asked him what this wire was. He said, it's for these lights he put in the front and it was all loose inside. So what we're gonna do is loosen this up. It's already loose anyway. Put it on the inside, I'm gonna put it here. Instead of out here, it's going to go on the other side, where it's not going to be affected by the turning of the bolt. And we're going to get it super tight. You can see how many turns it's going. <laughs> we know it was definitely really loose. You always want these super tight, so it's also a good idea every once in a while, check them. Hey, that one's a little loose too. Now they're super tight. So we're back to testing the charging system now with everything tight. Got your battery tester. And we want to do a charging system health again. Dark the engine, so ready to start it. Here we go. Then we're going to rev it up in a second. Okay. Here we go. We're going to rev it up for five seconds. All right. Guess what? It's still overcharging. Now, I've learned throughout the years, don't always trust machines. So, a $5,000 hotel with a charging system on it. Okay? So, we're going to do the in-vehicle test. Do a standalone diagnosis. Here we go. We'll start the test. It says the battery is good. So it's 87%, 901 crank, 850, so the crank is good, okay? Now we're gonna do the rest. Ensure the ignition is off. Starting's all normal. Doesn't like this cold weather, let me tell you. Okay, now we're gonna put it at 3,000 RPM. There we go. Okay, now turn on the headlights and the AC. Now rub it up. Now the no load voltage is coming down. It's not in the red yet. You can see it's the same as the high load. And this is why more expensive tools often work better. Okay, you saw the other tool, the cheaper one, 
it said it was too high. This says it's still in specs, where the other one said it's too high. This thing is extremely accurate, and it's telling the truth. Now, I did notice one thing. The starting voltage, when the battery terminal was loose and we didn't know it, we checked it with the other machine, was really high. This time, the starting voltage was a lot lower. Because if you have a loose battery terminal, especially the ground, it's going to draw a lot more power because it has to send power through the loose connection, which is an added point of resistance. So it's going to use more voltage to start the vehicle. But it all makes sense now. And it actually shows how good this Odyssey battery is because he's been driving it four years this way. So I went like almost three years with no problems. Then the last three quarters of a year, he's having occasional starting problems, right? Where he has to jump start it. But it can all be just because that terminal was loose. So what did we learn today? Well, a couple of things. One, you got to have good testing equipment when you're working on electrical systems. Even I, the great Scotty, cannot see electricity, right? I got to trust these machines. And if you get a machine that's not trustworthy, you're going down the wrong rabbit hole and you're screwed. Two, we learned that something is dumb. It's a loose ground connection, so the terminals wiggle or any of the wires hang on super tight can cause the weirdest problems. I mean, think about it. That battery was put in almost four years ago, and the terminal was loose, but it took over three years for it to affect the starting of the car. Now, maybe he had it on snug but not tight. It is a Subaru, those boxer engines do have a certain amount of vibration, and it might have just vibrated loose. That's why it's a good idea every once in a while, get yourself a wrench, go to your battery terminals, and just tighten them up, you know? Because, <laughs> hey, things wiggle over time. That's one of the big problems with fully electric cars. You can have all kinds of problems. At least this is just a regular car with a regular battery, and hey, you saw it was really simple to do. He still got a reasonable percentage of lifespan left in this vehicle because, as you saw from my second scan tool, it said it had 87% left. Okay? The other one said it was like 50% left of the life because it is four years old. So, one, it shows you, you got to use good equipment. And two, before you do anything, and I got to admit, I screwed up on this one. I should have made sure that these terminals were super tight and weren't loose, because this one was loose. But not being one of those greedy modern mechanics to charge you $150 an hour or $200, hey, <laughs> I don't charge anything. I make videos out of this stuff to help everybody out. So it costs nobody anything, and it could save you a small fortune the next time you got an electrical problem first make sure the terminals are tight because it can create all kinds of wacky problems in a modern vehicle just because they're loose. But I still stand my bad analysis of the scan tool saying it's not that good because after I fixed the ground it said it was still charging too much at idle. But the good one said no, it's charging the same at idle as it is at a higher speed. Now, it was 14 point something faults, which is relatively high, but if the battery terminal is loose when you're charging the battery, guess what? It doesn't get all that electricity because it's loose. So this battery is going to be charging itself up quite well for the next week or two as it's used because the battery is somewhat low because the terminal was loose. Now, it it doesn't seem to have ruined anything, but I've even seen it where a loose battery terminal, it'll fry an alternator, and the absolute worst thing that I've ever seen them do, and you never want to happen to you, is if it's loose, and you get voltage surges, it can fry your thousands and thousands of dollar computer in the car. So, now you've learned a little bit about electricity, how you need good equipment to check them, and you always got to do logical things first. Before you check the battery and everything, make sure the stupid terminals are super tight. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.